Hi, here's a real trap for young players. Look what can happen to an already populated PCB if you try and reflow it in a thermal oven. Hmm, I don't think our connector's gonna fit anymore. Oops! Look what's happened to all these through-hole connectors on this Samsung uh, dumpster dive 56-inch LCD TV I've got. Whoa, look at that. Just melted them. Ugh, horrible. Look, the uh, flat flex connector survived just fine. Why is it so? Now, as you saw in a previous video, and if you haven't, I'll link it in down below. Check it out, where I tried to repair this 46-inch uh, Samsung LCD TV I got in the dumpster. And I successfully uh, reflowed the Tcon processor board here in my reflow oven. No problems whatsoever. Unfortunately, it didn't fix the uh, fault, but I didn't actually damage the board at all. So I thought, eh, you know, I'll reflow the processor board. Um, so I took it out. Whacked it in my reflow oven, exactly the same thermal uh, profile as what I use for this uh, Tcon board, and that's what happened. Mmm, bummer. So why was there no damage to this uh, Tcon board at all, even though it's got a very similar looking connector up there, but this one just melted all of these connectors right along the edge here. Well, if you'll notice, these are actually uh, through-hole connectors on the bottom here. I've actually... Um, uh, desoldered a couple of them, but you'll notice that these are all through hole connectors every single through hole There's four of them and they all melted on this board Whereas the Tcon board here survived just fine, but you'll notice this connector up the top here is not a through hole connector It's actually a surface mount connector and that's the key to what's happened here because as a general rule, surface mount connectors like this one, even though it looks um, almost identical to this one, apart from all the melting, is that these surface mount ones are designed using higher temperature thermoplastics to actually survive the reflow soldering process used in uh, surface mount boards like this one. And likewise with this uh, high density ribbon cable surface mount connector, it's designed with plastics which are designed to survive the temperature profiles. And these uh, through hole ones are clearly not as higher temperature uh, rated or for as long. They might survive the same peak temperature, but these uh, this particular uh, type or brand or model or whatever might uh, actually survive them longer than these particular through hole ones here. Because when you solder through hole uh, components, of course, you're only heating the individual pins on the bottom if you're hand soldering or if you're wave uh, soldering. Of course, there's a big bubbling solder wave under the bottom here, which then goes along and heats up all the individual pins. And the individual pins are getting hot. They can get just as hot or hotter than uh, the entire connector here. But that is the difference. In a reflow oven, the entire connector, including all of the plastic, is slowly bored up to temperature, slowly rises up, gets hotter and hotter, and all of the plastic gets to that temperature. So if they're not designed to survive it, like these ones here clearly aren't, then oops, that's what happens. But even if you're buying proper surface mount connectors like this, supposedly designed to survive the reflow soldering process, you can still have issues. Now, here's a photo of um, some connectors which uh, at a former company, we um, bought these connectors and look what happened to them. They just melted. These are uh, right angle through hole uh, pin headers. They were supposedly designed to survive the reflow soldering process. But this particular batch we got weren't. I don't know. They might have changed the plastic mixture or whatever. Um, happened. Supposedly we got them from the same supplier. I don't know. We might have got duped. Might have got it. Might have gotten uh, cheap. You know, clone rip-off uh, parts from the Shenzhen market or something. But that's what happened. From one batch, we ordered another batch. Worked perfectly. So yeah, you know, it, it's all to do with the type of plastic and the temperature uh, rating of the plastics used in the connector. Now here's a typical uh, reflow temperature profile for some uh, lead-free solder paste. This comes from a uh, previous video which I've done, so click here if you haven't uh, seen that where I actually use the thermal oven and uh, uh, reflow the boards and get some uh, data logging plots of my oven here. And basically, it, you know, there's all these different, um, they're separated into different 
uh, sections, but it basically slowly ramps up like this, hits a peak, and then cools back down basically almost as fast as it can, uh, possibly. So uh, you're, the reason that it's like a big thick like that is because this is like the temperature range the acceptable temperature range for that particular solder to operate in. And each particular type of solder is going to have its own type of profile. Different parts can have different temperature profiles. You'll often see the uh, temperature profile recommendations in uh, component data sheets as well. And likewise, for surface mount components here, you go look up the data sheets for them and you'll likely find a uh, thermal profile uh, for some of the better manufacturers. For example, here's a data sheet for a high rose, which is a pretty reputable manufacturer of uh, these type of connectors, the DF13 uh, series. Look, here it is, recommended temperature uh, profiles. And you can see the preheating uh, phase here. These are the different phases I was talking about of the soldering process. And look at this. Look, max 230 degrees here for 60 seconds soldering. If it goes over 60 seconds, all bets are off, right? They, they don't, basically do not get guarantee that, uh, and, and it tells you down here as well in this table, look, more than two, um, soldering more than 220C for 10 to 30 seconds. So, you know, if you go over that, the things can melt and it doesn't take that long at all. Uh, you know, you could go 10 seconds over and that could be the difference between your connectors melting and not melting. And here is the actual temperature profile of my beta layout uh, thermal oven, which I uh, captured with my um, Agilent uh, data logging multimeter. And uh, this is a tablet shot. I did this in the uh, previous video. And you can see, you know, it ramps up sort of in a similar kind of way. And it reaches, you know, a peak temperature, 230 or 240 degrees or whatever it was. Um, and then but the problem with these types and types of cheap ass do-it-yourself ovens, um, especially the ones that aren't um, uh, fan force, they can't cool down very quickly. So if you don't open that door quick enough and sort of you know get all that heat out, and sometimes just opening the door is not enough, it can stay there for too long. And look, we're we're talking, you know, it can stay there for like a couple of minutes, right? That's well over the data sheet values for these um, sorts of things typically. So you know, all bets are off. As I said, you don't know what your particular connectors are going to do unless you've got the correct uh, data sheet and some data sheets don't even tell you all that sort of stuff. So it's all pretty hit and miss. But basically, yeah, you've got to not try and keep them at a hot temperature like this for too long, just the absolute minimum required. So it's a really fine balancing act. So in the case of this board here, we just got unlucky. And uh, well, you know, you could have uh, thought that, well, okay, these are through-hole connectors, maybe we should take care. I actually, by the way, put the board in like this, so these connectors were at the front, so I couldn't even visually monitor uh, those connectors uh, at the back here. So, you know, if I really had my uh, brain um, in gear, and I know this stuff, so I should have, like, gone, oh, yeah, okay, should be extra careful with you know, these through-hole connectors, maybe there's some issues there or something like that. Put them at the front, really start to monitor them. But by the time you start seeing it melting, it's probably too late. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oops. Just completely come a gutter. And other data sheets for this uh, TE connectivity one, for example. Um, this is a through, typical through-hole uh, boxed pin header like this. And um, uh, look, it's wave solder capable, okay? It doesn't say anything about reflow at all in this data sheet. So unless you specifically went and asked the manufacturer that... You know, you, you just don't know if this is compatible with, say, the uh, paste uh, in pin uh, soldering process. And that's, um, here's actually a uh, shot courtesy of uh, Phoenix Connectors. They've got a, um, like an app note uh, thing on this. And this shows how you can actually uh, reflow solder uh, regular through hole connectors using a reflow oven process. You actually put paste inside the hole, then put the connector in and then reflow it like a surface mount component. But if you use one of these uh, connectors which doesn't have the high temperature uh, thermoplastic in it to enable that and it's only wave solder compatible and you haven't checked, well, you can come a gutsa just like this.
So the moral of the story, just be careful using these cheap-ass do-it-yourself thermal ovens. They're not that great, they're not that precise, not that controlled, and just be aware that you can actually have problems like this. And in this case, I was probably a bit gung-ho, you know, I just reflowed the uh, teak on board, and it just survived fine and dandy. So I just whacked this one in, uh, not giving it a second thought. Oh, silly me through hole connectors on the side because apart from that everything else on this uh, processor board survived just fine it was just this right angle connectors in this case the particular type of plastic particular connector who knows who the manufacturer is who knows where they sourced them from they just didn't like it because this board is they um, almost certainly soldered this thing using a uh, way, like a two-step uh, process. They did the um, SMD reflow stuff, of course, which is, you know, 95% of the stuff on here, and then they put it through a dip soldering uh, process, a wave soldering process where it all bubbles up underneath and solders these connectors on the edge here. So I was actually able to desolder these things uh, pretty easily using my desolder pump. So you know, probably ultimately uh, repairable. It's not too big a deal just melting some connectors like this if I can get replacement ones or, or an equivalent one and just sort of bodge it in. I could even like individually take out the pins and just solder the pins back and just sort of bodge in the connector if I was uh, really desperate. But yeah, it's just a little oopsie. Trap for young players. Yeah, I got caught out. Hope you learned something useful out of that video, and if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and discuss it on YouTube and over at the blog and everything else. And by the time you see this, I've probably got a new website over at evblog.com uh, as well. That'll be, uh, uh, like, I'll slowly be adding uh, more features and stuff to that um, over the next month or two, so check it out. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.